Yo, hi guys. Thanks for stopping by and joining me for another video. Today, I'm super happy, super excited to be able to show to you a guitar that is very special and quite rare. Of course, I'm talking about the uh, Gibson SG Faded, uh, SG Special Faded with the ebony fingerboard and the crescent moon inlays. Um, so the guitar comes uh, from the previous owner in this HP series carbon fiber heart shell case. Uh, this one is dated to 2018. It is in, as you can see, it's really good condition. I mean, these cases can take a lot of abuse. I think it's one of uh, the best cases that Gibson ever made. They're super light, super sturdy, protect your instrument well. And uh, yeah, and they don't break your back when you're while carrying your instrument. As you can see, this one is pretty much in living room condition, so there's no, it hasn't been lugged around a lot, apparently. There's a tiny bit of, uh, of, a, of a scratch here, but other, other than that, if you, uh, another one here. So, but if you know these cases, these are really good. I mean, they're uh, super sturdy, super light, and they can like, get pretty, um, pretty scratched up due to the high gloss finish. But this one is in really good condition. So let's open her up and see. Oh, okay, here she is. Super nice. Very important to note with this guitar, as these are rare, this one comes with the original specifications, which was very important to me when I was buying this. Of course, these guitars did not come with hard shell cases, so the hard shell case is a very nice bonus, especially since it's the carbon fiber one. But yeah, getting one of these rare guitars in original spec conditions with home players great wear on it and with a nice hard shell case, I think this is a very good find. Okay, let's talk about the 2002-2003 Crescent Moon Ebony finger Fingerboard uh, guitars. These appeared in 2002 and the main production run was in 2002 and they were discontinued in 2003 so the bulk of the production happened in uh, 02. Um, these are uh, the um, SG's there were also uh, flying V's and I'm not sure if there were any explorers. Now the SG's uh, came with the difference between the SG's and the flying V's were that these came with the 490 series pickups and the flying V came with the 496-500T pickups. So let's talk about the specs of, uh, of this guitar. It's a special, so it should be a uh, lower tier model. However, it's got some pretty unique and sleek features up its sleeve. So first of all, it's got an ebony fingerboard. Beautiful, dark ebony, as you can see, with crescent moon inlays. I have to say I dig the vibes on these. Um, this guitar, uh, I was like, I never thought, uh, these are quite rare. I, I never thought one would pop up in my neck of the woods and as soon as it did, I immediately jumped on the opportunity and grabbed it. Um, the uh, fingerboard does not have binding, so it's an unbound fingerboard, uh, as you can see, so no fret nips. Um, what else is special about these specials? Um, the uh, logo, uh, the Gibson logo, is a is a decal. Trust recovery, yeah. And in the, the, uh, the finish is called faded, which means, well, my understanding, this is pretty much the um, equivalent of the modern day or modern or current, actually, um, finish uh, on the on the tributes, uh, the, the satin finish. So it's it's a thinner coat of nitro where you can actually, on a uh, thinner coat of nitro applied to poor sealed wood, you can actually feel the grain of the wood. The coat is that thin. So it's not a thick, high gloss finish where you would pretty much, where, where the coat would cover over uh, the pores of the wood to the point where you no longer feel them and you just feel a highly polished surface. Now this one, you actually feel the grain of the wood. This has two sides to it. The one advantage is the, the feel is really nice. You can really feel the grain of the wood. Um, it just feels warmer, feels very nice in the hand. 
The flip side of that is that the finish really bruises easily. But there's also two sides to that. So although you can really, I mean, it really wears down much quicker because it's thinner. And also, um, so it's, you see, it, it discolors. Although this is not, no part of, on this guitar is wore down, worn down to the wood. But um, this finish uh, is, is, due to the fact that it's thinner, it is, it is softer and easy, more, more vulnerable than, than, than a thick coat of, of, of nitro. And, uh, but on, on the other hand, the upside is that you are putting the impressions and dents right into the wood and not into the finish. So the finish does not crack because it's so thin. So there ton, there's a ton of indentations all over this guitar, as you will see. But um, here I have two bright lights shining down on this. I'm filming this from about, um, I don't know, um, 10 inches, 15 inches away, about 30 centimeters away. And you can barely tell there's anything. So, but there's plenty of wear marks. This is a player's grade guitar, although home player's grade. Uh, but still, so yeah. Um, the other f features and specs on this guitar are, so we got the Klusen Deluxe uh, tuners. Uh, we got the Ebony Fingerboard. We got the Crescent Moon inlays. We got the 490R and the 490T. We got the faded finish, which I just described. We got a Nashville style bridge, um, a tailpiece, toggle switch, and uh, four reflector knobs in silver. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let's take a look at the back of the guitar. Here she is. Again, there's much more wear on the back side, but even under such bright light conditions and from such uh, a close-up uh, distance, it's really hard to tell. So the finish, as I said, the faded finish is, is nice in that you can feel the wood grain, but it, it is much more, much more delicate. But this delicacy is offset by the fact that the dents that you put in this finish will not be really visible unless you really know where to look and you're looking with a, with a flashlight and a magnifier glass. Here's the neck, again, slight discoloration here. Very typical for this finish. And here's the back of the, of the headstock with your serial stamp and made in USA stamp. All right, so this is pretty much, oh yeah, it also comes with a poker chip. Uh, the poker chip uh, for the switch, the owner decided not to put it on because he liked the aesthetic of the uh, switch without it better. But the poker chip is here. Let me just show you. Yeah, here we go. Oh, and here's also this. So here we've got the poker chip. You can put it on if you like. Um, and here's um, the TKL. Uh, what is this thing? Oh yeah, it's got the key from the case. It's dated October 9th, 2018. All right, so let's throw this, let's throw this guitar on the workbench. Let's take a look at the details of the specs and let's also weigh her and let's take some, oh, before we do that, let's take some measurements of the pickups. All right, here we go. So the neck pickup measures at 7.69. The bridge measures at 8.0 on the nose, and the in-between position comes at, at 3.92, which is consistent with 490 series pickups. All right, let's throw her on the workbench and take a look at the individual parts and specs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have ourselves a look at this bad boy on the workbench. Let's start right here at the headstock. Let's examine the, the headstock and the tuners. The headstock, as you can see, is in good shape. The tuners as well. And here we have the uh, truss rod cavity with the truss rod in it. 
truss rod is in good shape. It's got plenty of flight in it. Cavity is reasonably routed. All right, moving on to the nut. Nut is reasonably, reasonably cut, re reasonably well cut. And with some graphite in it. The ebony fretboard. Now look at this. It's looking gorgeous. There are, uh, despite the 20 odd years of use, there are no no obvious signs of use, quite to the contrary, it's it's really nice. There are no dents, no scratches, no no tooling marks, uh, uh, typical for Gibson. No finger, fingernail scratches or dents or any of that, any of that stuff. And also, the frets, um, they're in great condition. Uh, there are no fret divots. Um, they're nicely rounded, shiny. And it's got still plenty of life left in him. So yeah, next looking good. Next, let's look at the uh, pickup routes to WC in the neck and uh, SGSC, probably the model designation uh, for the um, in the in the in the treble position. And uh, yeah, here we have our pair of four nineties. 490R in the neck, Gibson branded, and the 490T, Gibson branded. Yeah. In the, um, as far as the bridge is concerned, we have an API branded. Wait, sorry, it's upside down. API branded Nashville style bridge. Again, in good condition for its for its age, and for the stop tail, we have ourselves the stock API stop tail. All right, here we have the uh, we have the Switchcraft switch. Uh, the previous owner didn't like the poker chip, but it's included. So in case you want to put it on, I went with the aesthetic without it. But if you want it, it's there to put it on. And we have the uh, stock um, Gibson top hat reflector knobs. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the neck dimensions. Now, for the neck dimensions, we are looking at forty-three point zero two at the nut, and we're looking at. And we're looking at 51.72 at the 12th. Let's take a look at neck depth. So we're looking at 21, 21.1 at the first and 25.1 at the 12th. So yeah, it's, it's a 50 style neck, which is, it's got a little more girth, which is actually what I prefer. All right, guys, before we turn the guitar around and look at it from the back, I wanna give you some up, up close shots of the top of the guitar to give you a very good idea of the cosmetic condition this guitar is in. So. The previous owner had been using this guitar for, uh, well, uh, most every day for the past 20 years. So it it has, you can tell it's been played. It's been well played in, but it's been played in a uh, home setting, in a bedroom or living room kind of a, kind of a situation. So um, it's not gicked to death um, and not abused where you would have pieces of wood showing, but let's take a look. So here's a bit of a discoloration consistent with wear from the movements of the arm, strumming the strings, and there are small dings and, and small kind of, kind of scratches or indentations in, in, the, in the lacquer. So let's take a look in, de in depth uh, and in detail on the, uh, on the tiny dents, which there are quite a bit of. So there's one here on the horn, as you can see, uh, what was the other one? Bit of a scratch here. There's two small dents, 
actually one, two, three here. One tiny dent here, another one right here. It's a bit of a scratch here. Tiny, tiny, tiny dimples or dents right here. Yeah, so it's got signs of use all over, nothing major, but they are there. So just be aware that, you know, it's something that you will not notice instantly. You have to really look for it to see it. So that's, that's the uh, advantage of this finish. The disadvantage is it, it really dents easily. So now let's turn it around and look at it from the, from the back. All right, here we have the back of the guitar. So let's start with the control cavity. So here we have the two pickup leads and the bridge grounding wire. Uh, Switchcraft switch, Gibson branded pots, orange drop caps, no surprises here, 50 style wiring. I was biased by the previous owner that he had switched pickups and eventually settled on this setup with the original pickups and 50 style wiring, which is fine by me. It's actually what I prefer. Now let's take a look at the cosmetic condition of the guitar. There, there's much more wear on the back of the guitar than on the front. So let me just highlight uh, the wear. As you can see, so as you can see, the, as I said, the finish is pretty forgiving, although it dents easily. It's it's a much uh, thinner and softer finish than the higher end instrument high gloss finishes. I have two really bright lights shining down on this, uh, and I'm filming it on my iPhone from about a foot away or about 20 centimeters away and just looking at it under such bright light conditions and from such a close-up distance you'll not be able to see anything so but I'll grab my flashlight and show you the, the dents in detail so you can see there's uh, where are they? there's one right there on the horn the horn itself is is okay um, there's no dents there so moving on there's this kind of circular thing uh, from from the belt from cir circular impression and there's a bit of buckle worming let me get that in the right kind of light R right in this area let me just try and get that in the correct kind of uh, angle There you go. So here you can see there's there's buckle worming right there. There's a bit of a discoloration right here, which is consistent with the discoloration on the other side, which is from the arm resting against the guitar and strumming the guitar. And again, there's a bit of a scratch right there, scratch right there, a tiny scratch there. So again, it's something that you would not normally, another two, two, three tiny dimples right there, tiny scratch there, bit of a scratch right here. So it's not something that you would, you would see unless you really shine a light on it and are looking for it, but be aware, there, there. Let me get a bit of a wider shot of the neck. So this is the player's area. Again, the color is a bit faded here, consistent with the with the arm, uh, actually with the, with the palm of the hand, um, touching the fretboard for 20 years. So bear in mind, this use is 20 years of almost daily use, according to the previous owner of the guitar. It's still far away from the wood. The discoloration is showing, but it's still far away from the wood. So my guess is if you put another 20 years of playing in, you'll probably wear this down to the wood. And again, on the neck, there's a bunch of small, tiny, here are these, on, where the neck meets the body. These two edges have a bit of wear. Let me just shine my flashlight on it. See right there, and on the other side as well. And you can see a good close up of the circular imprint from the, from the belt. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to show you the neck as well. So, a bunch of tiny, tiny dents like they're on the body. Tiny, tiny, tiny dents and, and, and dimples in the finish. 
All right, here's the heel of the headstock. As you can see, it's, it's clean. There's no breaks, cracks, or repairs. And here's your headstock. Here's the serial number stamp and the stamp made in USA. Uh, Cluson Deluxe Gibson branded tuners. And the headstock back is, is clean. There's a bit of wear right here at the edge, nothing major. And a bit of a dent right here. Again, nothing major. So overall, good player's grade, red player's grade kind of situation. Let me just now take a look at the sides of the guitar, because the sides also tend to take a bit of abuse so that you get a good look at the sides as well. All right, here's the guitar on its side. Let's start here at the belt button. So some stand rash right there, a bit of a, a bit of a scratch, a bunch of scratches and, and little dimples and dents. Nothing going through the wood. This one is. So I, th I think the only one, or uh, there is one on, on the on the back that went through the wood. Uh, but that's that's about it. Um, scratch right there. Here we can see that the. the colored areas on both sides that we talked about earlier. Moving on to the horn, nothing major, a bit of a scratch here. And the side of the neck, looking good. There's tiny, tiny scratches and tiny scratches and dents consistent with the rest of the guitar. Here's the side of the headstock that we talked about earlier. This area is absolutely nice and clean. And yeah, this is the top of the headstock. Let's flip her around and look at her from the other side. All right, this is the underside. Let's again start at the belt button. So here's the stand rash, some, some tiny dents, some dents that don't go th all the way through the wood. Typical areas where you would find dents, a scratch as well, typical area. Two larger dents, but not going through to the wood. Some scratches, some discoloration, and here is the side of the side of the neck. And here's our headstock. There we go. All right. All right. Now. Let's put her on the scale and see how much she weighs. All right, the weight is 2.9, pretty much on the nose. All right, let's go ahead and hear some tones. Um, just before I start, I want to say um, this guitar feels absolutely amazing to play. It is set up with a super low, very nice action. This is a John Petrucci signature. I think it's a... Uh, Jazz 3, which is 1.38 or something. Yeah, I think it's 1.38. And it doesn't slide under the low E or the high E. Uh, it gets caught up in there, which tells you that the action is way lower. It's set up at about 1.2, both on the bass and the treble side. It feels absolutely, absolutely smooth. Effortless to play. Very nice. I will be going through the Deluxe Reverb, the special edition in wine red, and then for the cleans and for the for the for the dirty tones, I will be using the DNM Overdrive. All right, let's hear the tones. Let's start at with the volume at about seven, with the uh, with the neck and tone all the way up, and and let's see where it takes us. Okay. Um, 
volume to, uh, sorry, tone to three. All right, let's move on with the, the middle position. Both bridge and neck at seven. down to about seven on the bridge, volume down a bit on the bridge as well. tone all the way up. Okay, turn on the drive. See where that takes us. Let's start with the neck and tone, both tones all the way open. Bridge all the way open.
so here we are at the end of the video. Um, my final thoughts on this, it, this is a very fine guitar. The faded finish feels really good in your hand. It's really forgiving, although delicate. The ebony is really as dark and without pores, uh, which is one of the premium kind of ebonies these days become, because the ebony now being used as more of the streaky variety with more pores and this one is really dense and really dark so feels really nice under your fingers really nice guitar so if you ever get a chance pick one of these up you will not be disappointed in case this guitar is still available there will be links down below to my reverb ebay and my direct link in case not i hope this video helped someone and you learned something because i definitely learned something and that is making a video with a teardown of a guitar and a, and a demonstration of a guitar is definitely harder than it looks. I tried my damn best to make this look and sound as good as I can and it still looks and sounds like crap. So yeah, in case you made it all the way to the end of the video, please do like it and then join me for the next one. Thank you. Peace out.